students today's topic of discussion for us is going to be continental drift theory this was propounded by alfred wegener before we talk about the theory let's try to understand a little bit of its backdrop that how the theory actually got evolved his uncle happens to be Copen. So, to in order to help Copen, Alfred Wegener went out in search of paleo evidences. When we say paleo evidences, that means those evidences that are related to related to long back in the time scale could be millions of years ago. Whatever. Uh, uh, the evidences that are uh, that have become fossils now they were to be collected and based on that Copen wanted to make some climatic study on that so in this process Alfred Wegener went to uh, Greenland and over there what he had observed is he had observed one uh, very unusual aspect related to this part of Greenland wherein it was seen that the borders of on both the sides of this Greenland had striation marks that is stretched marks as if though somebody has torn two pieces very forcibly pulling them apart in such way it looked as if though something was forcibly broken and when Wegener got further interested into it he had sit with uh, the world map that was available and he has seen that roughly whatever at that time available data he had he could see that the southern part of uh, sorry the eastern part of south america and the western part of africa these two coastal lines they looked as if though they can be fitted into one and created as a one landmass which he has called it as juxtafix position and it is not exclusively with your south america and africa that is also possible with all the other continents when he tried to stitch them together that is pull them together if you can uh, if you can just recollect your childhood where you used to play a game wherein there used to be one block hole uh, empty and remaining else you have to move them uh, and uh, see to it that a picture on the other side gets framed up properly in the same way when he tried to do that with world map this world map could be properly evolved giving him further strength for his concept that probably all these land masses at one point of time were placed at one spot now a scientific theory just cannot go ahead with imaginations so based on this now he started further finding out trying to find out evidences which he could fortunately find because he was good at as i said in the beginning only he was trying to help Copen in finding fossiliferous evidences so the same fossiliferous evidences have also helped him in understanding or rather coming out with this theory that right now we are talking about that is continental drift theory wherein according to alfred wegener he says that earth at one point time had a single landmass and that was called as Pangaea and this Pangaea was surrounded by a water body a huge water body and that they have called it as Panthalsa or Panthalassa it's called as both so this according to Alfred Wegener Pangaea at at one point in the timeline now this is where the first criticism also comes which we will discuss later at one point in the timeline got 
broken there was a fracture and along with it and he relates it to the present natal of south africa or african continent and from there a rupture occurred wherein this pangaea got broken into pieces and these pieces of pangaea started moving apart from each other under many forces like we know that earth is not static when we know that earth is rotating and we know that this rotation of earth relates to or will result in a force that we call it as coriolis force coriolis force is that one which gets generated in the anti direction of the earth moment we all know that earth rotates from west to east so coriolis force is the force that gets generated and it rotates from east to west in the anti direction so going by this logic of alfred wegener according to him now whatever the broken pieces were there they got either drifted towards western side they got drifted towards western side under the influence of coriolis force or they moved north under buoyancy force that is the usual uh, floating uh, thing that happens so because of these two reasons the parts of pangaea erstwhile pangaea according to alfred wegener started sailing in northern direction and towards the westerly direction thus resulting in the formation of north america here south america here europe here asia here africa here and of course australia over here so probably if we have to seriously take continental drift theory where it fails is in explaining why australia has drifted entirely towards east so that's in the criticism part it will come right now uh, it should not worry us so according to this his explanation he says that he could find fossiliferous evidences in the form of glossopteros listosaurus so these are all uh, different fossiliferous both flora as well as fauna and how did they become an evidence is this listosaurus was such an animal that was not at all a saline water animal it could not survive or sustain in salt waters so this listosaurus was evidently visible on south america african continent madagascar so it also means that at one point of time these three parts were at one place such that this particular listosaurus used to move across all these land masses otherwise if they are separated by ocean waters which are salty it is not at all that easy for listosaurus to spread between these three different land masses so is with glossopteros and other evidences which he has come up with and he has tried to prove that at one point of time these particular uh, continental blocks were at one place and of course physical affinity is acceptable that is visible for us also to our naked eye fossiliferous evidences taken and not only that there is another mineral evidence actually which he gives is the eastern or northeast part of south america and central part of africa this is central africa they both had gold deposits placer deposits now gold is available over here 
and the rock continuation of the same is visible over here in the Brazilian part of South America. Now the question is, if they were never together at one point of time historically, how is it possible according to Alfred Wegener that there could be a continuation of the rock structure strata, which is a geological evidence, a very strong geological evidence. So with these fossiliferous evidences, geological evidences and juxtafix evidence, Alfred Wegener tries to give us the present continental drift theory and according to him only this particular movement of a huge landmass that we call it as uh, Gondwana land that has moved north and it has hit Angara land and uh, the resultant landform is the land or continent is our uh, Asian continent and more importantly our uh, Indian subcontinent and that has also resulted in the formation of Himalayas and that's one reason why you have a continuation of uh, your uh, mountain arc along the continental uh, boundaries. So that's uh, too much extent continental drift theory of Alfred Wegener E is absolutely uh, taken as uh, one of the primary theories in geomorphology in uh, explaining that how the present continents have come to their present shape and even uh, the technological evidences that today as of now we have suggest that continents are still moving and the best evidence that we have is Himalayas are still growing. So, these are the evidences, the present day science also accepts that continents are further moving and that movement has not stopped. And this topic happens to be very important in geomorphology. A number of times this was asked in uh, civil services examination. In 2015, there was a direct question about continental drift theory for FIMAX. So, otherwise also two, three times earlier it was asked. So, continental drift theory happens to be one of the basic theories in geomorphology.